Hello. This is Professor Stephen Hawking. Hi to the members of the Tommy Boyd Forum. This is the Human Zoo. Enjoy. Thank you and good night. Anyway, back to this. Have you heard of a, uh, a program that used to be on a radio station some years ago called The Human Zoo, which is a very Oh, I have heard about that. I thought it was terrible. Well, and, no. I, and I should know, because I was the, not only the host, but the creator oh, of well, this you weren't, were you? gigantic, ludicrous... I've had a lot of abuse levelled against that show. Oh, I'm, 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 at the, I'm at the front of the queue, mate, to hammer this show. <laughs> <laughs> Have you come across those ships carrying nuclear waste? You no. Know, well, you, no, you haven't come across them, but you've heard <laughs> Not of them. Not in my, in my recent day-to-day well, day life. That, that is what this broadcasting vehicle reminded me of. Sort of dripping, rusting, you know, filthy, lousy, useless, hold below the waterline, dangerous, gigantic things, capable of causing an unbelievable amount of harm and danger, danger everywhere. Um, and this was just, and, and that's what this radio program was like. All you did was, all I did was open the phone lines up and anybody who wanted to come to air could come to air. Just total access. Just anyone? Yeah. For hours. And people loved it. Well, a certain type of person loved it. Young people loved it. Um, so lots of people used to tune in. And I think one of the, tried to get through, I should say, to the human zoo. And one of the uh, reasons that lots of people try to get through is because it was simply a credential to go to work or to go to college or whatever on the Monday morning and say, yes, I got through, I did it. It didn't matter what you did, and most of it was rubbish. <laughs> really, really bad rubbish. But, mm. but at the same time, some of it was quite moving and quite interesting and poignant. Occasionally something poignant would happen. He's planted rice in the paddy fields of Thailand. He's seen the sunrise from the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. He's meditated within the ancient walls of Machu Picchu. He's got a Renault Turbo Sport and a TVR. He's got a huge bank balance. He could go out with any woman in the country. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a close personal friend of his family. He's been invited to the Prime Minister's house for drinks. He's the closest thing on earth to the angel Gabriel. He's Tommy Boyd. Probably imagine how much that information annoys the living daylights out of so many younger men. You feel that uh, by the time they've reached my tender age, they won't have achieved as much as I have. <laughs> it's part of the joy of that information, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, it's 700, 40, 50, 60. The giggle on the end is the lady we were talking to just before the news. I'm sorry I missed your name. Sarah. Sarah, hi. I am the Tommy Boyd radio experiment. It does exactly what it says in the paper. Mmm, I smell bacon. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, when you grow up, when you grow up. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, it sucks pretty bad right now. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, when you grow up, when you grow up. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, it sucks pretty bad right now. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, when you grow up, when you grow up. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, and then you're gonna die. Tommy, 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 boy. Yeah, I didn't say that, but it's true. I mean, tell me it ain't so, Joe, but it is. Life is gonna suck, and then you're gonna die, and you know, phew, that's just how it is. But we can all shelter from the rain. In this little doorway, known as phone-in radio, um, 0800 40 50 60 is the number, and we take calls on a Sunday night unscreened. There's a good case for screening calls, there's a good case for phone operators, researchers, producers, talking to, con to callers before they go to air in order to help them shape their views, and so on and so forth, and that's great phone-in radio. But you get a distorted view of society because everybody seems to be sane and have a, a good point that's been missed so far in this debate, well thought out. Well, humanity's not like that. We're sharing the planet with um, a different spectrum of uh, folk and um, we get an opportunity to find out just who they are. This is the way... On a Sunday night. The cookie crumbles. Yes, the cookie crumbles. In this way. Oh, 0800 40 50 60. Ash, just quickly before we take our first few calls oh, unscreened. Oh, yes. How did I do? 47 out of 100. So that's 47 percent. That's grade C. It's good. Yeah, I no, 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 no. Considering, I would, I would give that a B plus to an A minus. Really? Oh yes. Well, I mean, you know, random. We've got 25. It, yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Uh-huh. No, uh, less than that because the what the would a monkey a random monkey would have got twenty three. Right. So I'm twice as clever as a monkey. One way of looking at it. That's oh, good. it's yeah. Oh, it's seven hundred forty, fifty, sixty. Let's but which species of monkey? I mean, if it's one of those little tree monkeys, I'm not that impressed. But it's if it's a ninety-eight percent genetically identical chimpanzee, well, chimpanzees aren't monkeys. But let's not get into that debate. Oh, you're right. You yeah. that. We're apes. We're not monkeys. Ah. Uh, I, I, I don't know what the difference is between ape and monkey. We're a great ape. Prehensile tails. We are great, great ape. We are great. We are, there are 212 species of ape, and we are the 212th. Wow. We're the only hairless one. I didn't know there was that many of them. Yes. Well, Desmond Morris says so in the naked ape. Well, I don't know if I'd trust that. Let's go to line one. Line one, you're live on Talk Sport. Who have we here? You love Timmy Mallet. In. Let's go to line one. Line one, you're live on talk. Uh, line two, you're live on Talk Sport. Good evening. <laughs> yep. Line three, you're live on Talk Sport. Hello. Hello. We're by far the greatest team the world's ever seen. That is Leicester City. Leicester City FC Pillar Club. Okay, that's reasonable. You see, you get, you get, you get the idea of it. We get through the lunatic fringe. It takes about five minutes, and then we eventually. <laughs> begin to move onwards and upwards. Let's go straight to line one and see who's there. Hi, line one, you're on the human zoo. The human zoo of life on the radio. Where Tommy and Ash do their thing, you know, like a miracle. But do you know why we call you all of the time? We love you, Tommy. We love you, Ash. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Chickentika.net. Richard Boxall is ready now. Cool. Let's go straight to Tulsa and get the very latest on the U.S. Open from Talk Sports. Richard Boxall. How? Uh, that was a funny phone call, wasn't it? They all are, mate. That was very, very weird. Line two. You're on the Human Zoo. Good evening. You love Bob Bubka. Hey! <laughs> it's a hot night tonight. Line one. You're live on the Human Zoo. Hey there. Hello. <laughs> Burning up and the lights are blue. We are not just where to go. Hippie hippie hippie, hippie hippie hippie, even to be forgotten. And um, hippie hippie hippie, we see the dancing queen. You see a red serpentine. Yeah, very good. Bye. Bye. We'll take some more calls live, unscreened and at random. We don't know who's going to be next. We don't know what they're going to do or say. I think because we had the quiz from 10 until a little after 11 o'clock, the lunatic fringe are a little bit pent up and frustrated, which is cool. We'll let them uh, let off steam for, for a wee while longer and, uh, and then see how things settle. Um, if you're going to give a performance, let's have it crisp and aggressive. Let's have it clean and clear. We want to hear what you have to say, no matter how much nonsense it is. Uh, if you've got audio, um, that's great. If you've worked on something during the week, cool. But make sure that uh, we can hear it. We want to hear what you're doing. Line six, you're on Talk Sports Human Zoo. Good evening. Hello, Tommy. Hiya. This is your number two caller. Okay. You love Mike Dickin. Hey, fella. Who's the number one then? 0870 40 number. Thanks for the emails there, Ash. No problem. Have you been well? Yeah, I've, I've been alright. last sir. week. No, I've had a haircut though. You, I know, I didn't did say anything. Did you not like to say? Um, well, I saw you with your haircut because you were actually out on the fire escape when I arrived, just getting the air. Oh, did you see me before I saw you? No, I didn't, no, but I guess you oh. were there because you're usually out on the fire escape taking the air. Yeah. Lovely warm air. Yeah. Because uh, most people say, oh, you've had your haircut, and yeah. I say, oh, I know. I have. Mm. And it's obvious. I always try to... Well, the first thing that comes into my mind, I don't say. Yeah. I say the second thing. But um, it's a nice haircut. Did it cost? Yeah, uh, six quid. That's very good. It's good, isn't it? Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes you look slightly executive. Well, I, I thought I'd better, you know, look a bit more executive. I don't want to say this, but it makes you look a little bit like an advertising man. Is that all right? 
Well, I, I don't know, really. I, you know, I have to conform. You have to conform, don't you? No. I've got a wedding anyway in a month. I've got to wear a top hat. <laughs> <laughs> so it would, I'd look like a scarecrow if I had long uh, hair. Yeah, you have to watch wedding photos because yeah. no matter what you look like, in, in ten years', years time exactly. you look funny. Yeah. You know. So with this hair you can, and the top hat, I won't look funny. Not really. so funny. Line three, you're live on Talk Sport. Good evening. Hello, Tommy. My name is Professor Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Science is a search for truth. Yet despite man's best efforts, the universe is still replete with mystery. There is, however, one thing we can be certain of. And that is that. You love Timmy Mallet. <laughs> oh yes you do. Good. I love Timmy Mallet. Yeah, yeah. That was good. That was Tommy good. and Timmy, sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. That's all I have to say except to leave you with this one final piece of wisdom. Remember, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. And in my case, scares. <laughs> Thank you and good night. That's very good. Yeah. I enjoyed that. That's the best one tonight so far, definitely. That one gets the prize, the car, and the holiday in uh, one of those um, hotel, those singles, hotels in the Caribbean. He is funny, that Stephen Hawking. He is. He's, 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 he's my man. Going back to what we were saying, that was a great call. That was funny. Brilliant. What was, what was that punchline? You have nothing to fear except fear itself. Except in my case, also spears. No, <laughs> stairs. Oh, <laughs> stairs. <laughs> stairs. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's funny. I heard spears. <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. Oh, that's quite funny. That's quite funny. In oh, fact, stairs. anything could be funny. You know, Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Good one. That was a really quality comedy. I hope Stephen Hawking's not upset. That would be careful. We'll go to line two and say good morning. You're live on Talk Sport. Hello. I'm going down to Alphabet Street. I'm going down to Alphabet Street. That's very nice. You've got a fairly good voice. Can you do anything else? Hello? Can you do anything else? Now you thought I'd get fed up and put the phone down and you didn't you, but I'm still, I've still got you. I'm going to leave you there unless you want to say something. Are you lonely? Are you frightened? Because we all are. I am. You can ring me any time. We won't mind. Got to go now. Bye-bye. That -bye. was an important piece of social interaction. That I'm very proud of what I just did. Line two, you're live on Talk Sport. Hello. Hello, Tommy. Hiya. Hey, I'm uh, spending a, a couple of weeks over here from Deutschland, and I just rang up to say how much I love your country and stuff. Very good. Yeah, so uh, I just have to say... You know, you know your country is, you say, Deutschland. Yeah. Does it not offend you that we don't call it Deutschland, we call it Germany? Uh, not particularly, it's like... Uh, it's I don't wrong, know. though, isn't it? I never, never really considered it pr pretty much, no. Why do we call it Germany when it's not called Germany? It's called Deutschland. Yeah, maybe Second World War or something like that, I don't know. The Second World War? It could be. <laughs> yeah, it's it's drifting a little bit. Maybe, yeah. It sort of went from Bavaria to Toxteth in no time at all. Middle How quickly you learn. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for your call. In all seriousness... Yeah, seriously. Well, zero, really. Honestly? Yes, phrase. You're so. joking. So, yeah. where, where do you reckon I'll finish top three? Fourth. Fourth? Yeah, I'd say yes. fourth as well. Fourth. Who's, who's going who's gonna to finish above then? Well, this isn't exactly Mensa uh, time, is it? Um, Manchester United, Arsenal and Liverpool. Liverpool? Yeah. So, where's Liverpool come from all of a sudden? Just because they had a bit of a good run at the end of last season. Does that mean that they're 
going to really become beauty all of a sudden next season? Well, I think they do have um, a better squad, all in all, than Leeds do. Marginal, but that's how yeah. I think it'll turn out. Oh, well. And it, you're only talking through your shirt if you think... Eight. Seventeen eight. Can I play your wife? <laughs> your wife! Can I play your... Nice one. Thank you. Very good, very good. And to line four. Line four, good evening. You're live on Talk Sports Human Zoo. <laughs> uh, Lord Vader. Good evening. It's I, Lord Vader. Evening. All right? Is that Irish back? Oh, yeah, man. I'm pleased that, it, that, pleased that you care. All right. Never mind. This evening, Lord Vader will be the king. Ah, uh, hi, King, ma'am. King Vader? No, the king. What? King. Yeah, king Vader. Not King Vader. Lord Vader will be the king. Yeah, but kings are bigger than lords. I don't understand. You would understand if you were here and you were able to see the rhinestones sewn into my cape. Well, are you King Vader the first or what, man? Yeah. Not King Vader. If you say that one more time, I'll show you a trick with a lightsaber which will bring tears to your eyes. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Who are you going to be tonight? Elvis. Elvis. Elvis Costello. Elvis, Elvis Presley. Yes. Wow, yes. Tonight on the Human Zoo, Lord Vader is yes. the king. Well, and... I just can't help believing. Go for it. Take it away, boys. stage because he's got presents. He has. Yeah, nice. he's always giving out presents. Would he would he be would he be would he be in that outfit only in white? Oh yeah. With ri a rhinestone cape. Uh, yeah. A I mean, rhinestone uh, <laughs> And that whole thing. Can you have a quiff on, the, on his a helmet? Quiff on his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and the sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, about sort of twenty seven stone, yeah, forked out. Brilliant. Oh eight seven hundred forty fifty sixty. It's the Human Zoo on Talk Sport. On line four, line three, in fact. Oh, hi, Tommy. It's Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi. I was going to say that Matthew Baker, my friend's a screw bag, mm. and that my girlfriend's a carpet muncher. Cheers, mm. man. Okay, that's cool. Oh eight seven hundred forty fifty sixty. It's Talk Sport. I'm Tommy Boyd. Ash is here. We're taking calls live, unscreened, and completely at random. We don't know who's going to be next. If you're calling the show and you hear the phone is ringing as opposed to the engage tone, it means you're on the switchboard. Bear with it. As soon as you hear speech, it's me, and you're on the radio. Line six, you're live on Talk Sport. Hi. Tommy, the ugliest people in the world are your kids. Uh, <laughs> and I'm porking your wife. Yeah, that guy's been doing stuff. That's actually, that's, that's, that's not so funny, actually, no. fella. Um... Uh, any more calls about my children uh, even if they're supposed to be slightly funny my children can take it but I just think you don't know that so I don't like you any longer quite so much and a few calls like that and we'll stop doing this and so you'd lose your fun so keep it on the keep it on the funny side that wasn't okay just serious point but you know what I'm saying choosing your next thought if only you could choose your next thought 
see each of us can choose where we're going to look next I'm going to look at Ash now then I'm going to turn and I'm going to look at the door in the studio which leads out the corridor then I'm going to look out of the window and I can see the Millennium Wheel and a couple of skyscrapers <coughs> I can lit confirm up. that he is doing this, all these things. what I'm illustrating is that I, however I cannot choose anywhere near as easily what to think next I'm going to think about cake next Mm. Isn't it extraordinary that one, one of the one of the many thoughts that does pop into your mind though is nude women? Well, that, that, from that, and cake and cake. Nude women with cake. <laughs> that. Soapy nude women. Yeah, soaping themselves. Soapy soapy women with cake. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't, cut off doesn't do cake any. Doesn't on a tray. Do, doesn't take me to a nice place when you mind it, Ash. No, sorry. I shouldn't sure. have done that. I left you with a nightmare. Yeah. 08700 40 50 60. Uh, we'll go to line five. Line five, you're live on Talk Sport. Are you feeling lucky, punk? Line six. Hi. You're live on Talk Sport. Good evening. Hi, Tommy. Hello there. Who's this? My name's Alan. Hello, Alan. Yeah, I just wanted to know whether you have a fan club. Several. I just figure you could do with all the help you can get the way your career is going, mate. He's been on before this bloke. He's, uh, you can always tell that he's 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 the, he's the guy who pulled the did the toilet effect. Um, very poor that was. Very poor. Stupid that person. He's very frustrated. Would have got less than a a golden lion tamarind. What it is is he's very jealous. You see, because because he doesn't realise how brilliant what I do is. Um, you know, although it sounds casual and kind of made up, you know, the team of writers that are involved and the various producers, mm. voice coaches, um, personal massage, nutrition experts and so forth that I have in order to bring me up to this pitch, um, we keep in the sidelines so that it all sounds casual and made up. And so it fools chaps like him into thinking, well, I could do that. <laughs> and therefore, I could be as rich yeah. and as influential you know takes a lot more than what people think yes because I think that's the important thing is that my work is pivotal I mean I, I know in societal saying. in societal terms my work is, is quite pivotal and I see myself as being very much a footbridge between the past and the future for, for a lot of people but you can spend hours and not actually have anything physical or something malleable mm there in front uh, you know that, that is tangible to see mm. but yet you have spent the whole day in a process mm. almost mm. Mm. to come to, to get to this level and then people like that phone in and it, to them it's just like you know a bowl of peanuts to be picked up that's the idea that's what it needs to look like let's go to line 5 you're on talk sport line 5 hello again Tommy this is Professor Stephen Working. My colleagues and I are trying to find a unified theory of everything. One simple equation to fully describe how the universe functions. While this is important work, there is another equally pressing question to which I seek an answer. The question is... Can I pleasure your wife? I theorize that I can. Although, to be honest, she would have to do most of the work. But I guarantee she will love it. She sounds like a right old goer. I must remember to wear my lobster bib. Anyway, while I anticipate our encounter, let me leave you with my thought for the week. People say one danger of time travel is going back in time and accidentally killing your own grandfather before your father was conceived, thereby erasing yourself from history. But I say, why be so negative? There's an equal chance that you might kill Jeremy Beadle's grandfather instead. So, always look on the bright side of life. Thank you and good night. This guy's good. He's very good. Man. This guy's good. That was a ten. Yeah. That's his second ten in a row. Yeah, that's very good. That's very He's good. in the final. Of course... Batman like is coming in. Uh, He's the man who discovered Jeremy Beadle. If, if, if he could have, yeah, prevented uh, uh, Babin. Uh, uh, and, and I was thinking about that when I was having a wee. Babin's coming in and he's the man who discovered Jeremy Beadle on, on uh, British local radio 25 years ago. And so that's funny, isn't it? Yeah. But he's good, that guy. 
Yeah, well, he's very good. He's that guy's very good. Because I, I know you do that computer program. You have to put. You have to. You have to write yeah. in pauses, oh, and right. he actually puts in the right amount of pause for comic effect. Timing. Yeah. It's paragraph, 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 paragraph. Give you a second, and he does it. And that's good script. Very nice. Not quite as funny as you have nothing to fear but fear itself. Except in my case, stairs. But it was still, you know, very good. Because he thought of the ending first. That's the secret of comedy. You've got to think of the ending first. I should know, I, I used to write for Burned of Money. Inevitably, when you see a team week in, week out, you start to get a soft spot for them and you end up a supporter of them. Uh, to ask you a question then, mm. if you moved to Liverpool, who would you support? Well, it, it wouldn't work like that. You don't choose a football team. Would you choose, what would you do like work like that. Nobody's ever chosen, nobody's ever sat down with a blank piece of paper and gone, now, who shall I support? Apart from those those city blokes who, who, who go and watch Chelsea and eat sushi and who don't know the offside law. You what, know. the headhunters? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, my mate wants a word. Cool. Hi, it's Dr. Eagle Spengler here again, Tommy. Mm. How's it going? Yeah, good, yeah. You know, the, uh, our little ghost friend, Slimer, mm -hmm. the green one, mm -hmm. he's, uh, he wants to hold you, Tommy. Mm. Can you put your mate back on? Pardon? Can you put your mate back on? My friend? Yeah. yeah. Everybody sing this song! <laughs> He panicked when I said put your mate back on because he realised that meant he was trapped. Could he? He just flipped. When I said put yeah. your mate when I, when I said put your mate on, he just flipped. <laughs> What team is they support? What? I don't know. Because... You know, they're coming round to it now a little bit, but he panicked when I said, could you put your mate back on? Because that's shorthand for, um, I don't want to talk to you any longer. Yeah. And he panicked, he did. didn't he? If he'd, been dri singing. if he'd been driving a car, he would have gone right into the wall at that point. Oh, eight seven hundred forty fifty sixty. It's Talk Sport. I'm Tommy Boyd. Ash is here. Some emails that have come in, Ash has kindly brought through. Alan Goldsworthy, love the show. Please keep up the good work for all our sakes. P.S. Charter Boy is a skunk. This is the pilot um, who now phones the show on a regular basis. How does he call a lot now? Oh, he's called him three times now. He's absolutely hooked. And uh, it's great to hear the, the grit the grit in his, the, his gritted teethness or whatever it is about yeah, yeah. you know because he's so cross that he's hooked <laughs> he just doesn't get it that he doesn't understand why he's hooked but he's hooked have you found out what he flies yet Let no no I haven't no I haven't the reason he won't tell us which airline he works for is because it's obviously one of those bucket ones and he wishes yeah. it was BA and it ain't because yeah. if it was BA he'd hint it was BA yeah. you know and then so I'd rather didn't mention the name on there he's one of those because uh, it's extremely embarrassing do you know what he said he what? said I won't mention the name of my airline on there because it would be very embarrassing for my colleagues <laughs> 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 what a world some people live in really 0870 line one you're live on talk sport hello Tommy hiya yeah I was wondering how you and Mike Dickey were getting along are you, are you still an item? Are we still an item? Yes. Um. Well, are you still engaged to Mike or not? This is very poor, isn't it? Well, really? It's well, not funny, really. Well, I mean, it's not. I was just wondering. You know, I. I c were, you, were you a bit jealous when you found out about uh, James H. Reeve? Because he suffered the same thing as you, didn't he? He got caught in the toilets, giving him one. This isn't. This is neither interesting nor amusing. He's, he's still giving Mike Dick in one. I mean, you know, do you know you you you're probably like this with your friends, and it's it's why they go, oh God, here he comes when you walk into the pub. Well, answer the question: Are you still with him or not? No, I'm I'm making the conversation more interesting by 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 trying to show you that your if your social skills are are as good as as you're demonstrating at the moment, it it it's why things aren't working out for you as you would like. Because this is poor. 
my friend. It's not. It's not meant. It's, to be. it's not funny. It's not, it's not meant to be funny. It's not whatever you hope it is. It's not meant to be funny. What is I'm it meant to be? Question. Yeah. What is it meant I'm to be? Your question. Answer the question. What is it meant to be? I Shocking. And no. Is it meant to be hurtful? Well, is it? Well, what's uh, it meant to be? There's internet rumours. These are the internet rumours. Yes, but what's the purpose of you wanting to try and do something? What is it you're trying to do, and, w and for what? I want to. I want to know. Uh, what, but why? What's happening? Why? I'm interested. But you know that it's. You know this is poor. This is just very, very weak. Not poor like your radio show. My radio show is extremely sophisticated. It's rubbish. It's too clever for you. It's absolutely rubbish. And I'm too good for you. That pilot got better of you. He, he's got your number. In your dreams. Yeah. He, uh, he phones me. He's hooked on me. He's stuck on me. I've got him exactly where I want him. He was too intelligent for you and you couldn't handle him. How does he deal with the fact that he can't stop listening to the show just as I told him that he wouldn't be able to? How does he deal with that? He hates it. No, he said he likes listening to his own, his own name being mentioned. That's why he listens to it, not just for you. I told him that he would be hooked on the show and he is. How do you think that feels? You'd actually find out that people actually listen to this because of the calls, not because of you. Do you really believe that? Yeah, I do. You know you don't. You're a liar, you're as sure. well as weak. You're a liar. You always say you haven't I've lied never since lied. 1972, but it's garbage. You lie all the time. Uh, 1973, actually. You but at least it shows something, doesn't it? That you listen to me more carefully than I listen to you. Now, why is that? I'll tell you why it is. It's because I'm worth listening to. Because I have depth, I have wisdom, I have genius, I have charm. You dream of being me, and you know that you never will. Not in this lifetime, or your next lifetime, or the lifetime after that. But if you live as long as me, as many times as me, there is a chance that one day you might emerge from that cocoon that you live in now. A butterfly, like you, me. You don't like it, do you, Tommy? You don't, you don't like it. Like what? You don't like it, the fact that the uh, pilot got better of you. You see, you're trying to change the subject again. I no. want that pilot to ring, ring up again tonight. I, I, I want the pilot to ring up again tonight. You know why? Because every he, time he rings up, he, he knows you have won. He kicks your ass in conversation, that's what he does. Well, He's too intelligent for you. Yeah, that's right. Far too intelligent. Anyway, Tommy. That? Yeah. And I bless your wife. <laughs> I doubt it very much indeed, because I don't think you're able to do anything. He's gone. He's away. Now, I'd rather have a decent argument, though. If you fancy a decent mm. argument, please give me a call. Really. He was he was a master in the art of buffoonery, that guy. Oh eight seven hundred forty fifty sixty. Let's go to line one. Line one, you're live on Talk Sport. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Tommy. Yes. I love you. So do I. I do. Good. You're my best friend. I want sex with you. Is that a man? Well, he didn't hang on to get your number. No, was that a man? Uh, I think so. I think that was a, 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 a woman trapped in a man's body. Oh, it's 700, 40, 50, 60. Let's go to line two. Good morning, line two. You're live on Talk Sport. Oh, I know fucking everything. I know everything. So you? Yeah. What's everything about then? Well, everything's about. Everything's about. Everything's about. Tell me. I'll tell you what tell everything's me. about. Tell me what everything's about. Everything's about is. <laughs> Very good. Was that Derek, Derek and Clive? Clive. Derek and Clive. Yeah. Derek and Clive. Fantastic. Oh, it's seven oh four twenty twenty twenty. Don't abuse it. No. The foundation presents. And in forty minutes, basketball from the United States, NBA two thousand. This is LWT. from Tommy Boy on Aces Talk Sport listeners. From IPN, the news at 10, presented by Steve Martin. On the radio program earlier today on Talk Sport, Tommy Boy made an announcement which surprised many thousands of people across the country. 
Mike Dickin is having an affair with Timmy Mallet. In a telephone interview, he had this to say. I'm five. Hi. Good evening, Mr. Boyd. This is Stephen Hawking from the News at 10. Oh, good. Do you condone the relationship between Mike Dickin and Timmy Mallet? I don't. You asked me. I don't. Do you think it will be a great loss to radio broadcasting if Mike Dickin loses his job? Not really. But the newspapers are reporting that he is getting a lot of pressure to quit his job. Oh, I wonder what the gay people are going to get cross about that. And in the 80s, you used to present the Why Awake Club with Timmy Mallet. You know, that, that is one of, the, that, that, that's one of the most unsung pleasures there is. And do you have a lot of admiration for Timmy Mallet? I do. Well, I personally don't have any. You don't? None at all. Finally, what program do you think will win the title of the greatest children's TV show of all time? Um, Nightmare. Thank you for your time, Mr. Boyd. Goodbye. Stunning, I love line five. More on this story can be found by visiting TommyBoyd.50Megs.com. That's all for now from the news at 10. Good night. Getting a bit good, some of these yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> getting a bit good. This is great. I think. We might have stop it if we get That's too it. good. Hey, Tommy. Yeah? Can I tell your wife? By all means. By all means. I, I, I wouldn't... There's, there's well, he might not be able to. Uh, he might not be of the <laughs> standard to be able to. <laughs> it's not a particularly high-stakes game. Isn't it? Oh eight seven hundred forty fifty sixty. One of my hobbies is the fact that um, I've become completely unsurprisable and unshockable. You should try it sometime. I, I can remember when things used to shock me and upset me, and I, it was pathetic, pathetic. A bit like those old ladies who who are always on the listen out for somebody saying a swear word on the bus. Yeah. They want to be shocked and offended. And like, oh, 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 oh. 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 It's just no way to live your life. They puff their cheeks and move backwards, don't they? They love it. They love it. You know, I mean, a professional would would carry... Just do something, anything. Just talk. You know, what? Yeah. Be interesting. Talk to the audience. Got to be interesting. Yeah, it would have been, you know, would have brought audience in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Much better than the Bee Gees, not the Bee Gees. No. Thank you for that. Nice one, Line 1. This is Line 2. And a lovely voiceless storyteller as well. Michelangelo is his name, I Next week. Now, what's this thing that I'm going to tell you that no adults know? And they'll be interested when you tell them. Well, it has to do with exactly how far back you're supposed to sit from your television screen. Now, I've got it. I've mm-hmm. got the official distance. All you need to yeah. do to measure your own telly is, like I say, a ruler, piece of string. You've got it's to get no, it, those things. And it's official too. Oh, I've been on the phone to London about it. <laughs> Some sad person has taken me off children's ITV. I do know the official distance that you're supposed to sit back from a TV screen. What is it? One and a half times the diagonal measurement of the screen, which is ludicrous. That's very near, isn't it? Ludicrous. Very near. That's the official distance. That is disgusting. That's what the Television Commission says you should sit back from a TV screen one and a half times the diagonal distance of the screen. Ludicrous. Ludicrous size. Who's this that close? Nobody. No. No. Line three, you're on the human zoo. Hey. You're a big fan, but you ain't got a watch. Thank you. You have got a watch. I have. That's tied it all together, really, hasn't it? Yeah. Two themes this evening. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to Steve, who's calling from Liverpool. Steve, you're on Talk Sport. Good evening. Never gonna give you up. Never, never gonna let, let you go. go. Never gonna turn around and desert you. you. Russell, who calls from Notting Hill. Russell. Hi. Um. I wonder. Has been. Are you a bitch? I'm talking your wife, and mine is twelve inches. Ah. Last one. John's in Glasgow. John, you're on Talk Sport. Good evening. Talk, yes. Hello? Hello, John. All right. Hi. Um, don't know what to say, man. That's this a good, one d- d- good enough start to a phone-in show, isn't it? Really, I didn't know what to say. Uh, no, I listened to it before. I just was going through and just heard it. Mm-hmm. I just thought I'd phone up, see if I got on, and I did. Yeah, well, is that it, then? No, I just uh, phoned up to say that I'd like to raise your wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you can if you want to. Oh, cool. Where he goes. 
I always never ceases to amaze me that, um, that, uh, well, I don't, no, no, it never ceases to amaze me. Let's get precise about this. Um, it amuses me when people try to shock you and they think that's fantastic. Uh, it's wonderful not to be shockable. You should try it. Uh, if you're somebody who gets shocked easily. Getting shocked easily is bad for your arteries. It's bad for your disposition. But worst of all, it leaves you vulnerable. If you're unshockable, and it takes practice, I have to say it takes practice. But if you're unshockable, you effectively disarm your enemies. You know, it's like with swearing. If we did away with making swearing something that you disapprove of, so that all that language, which gets called bad by people, is no longer bad, all right? then all that's happened is that people who had previously been provided with a weapon by their intended victims are disarmed. And the same goes with shock. I mean, you cannot shock me. Okay, kids? You cannot shock Uncle Tom. Wilfred, good evening. Yes, good evening, Tommy. I, I, I just wanted to, sh to ask you, now, I'm very pleased that you have uh, you're screening the calls. It's much easier to get access to you because whenever it's whenever you get all the lunatics on at once, you, you, the lines are absolutely jam packed, and you could be three or four hours. But th uh, that's a good thing. Now that you're screening, now it, I wanted to ask you why everybody's a critic. You don't discuss the issues. You see, I I have issues that I want to discuss, and and uh, it seems to be trivial little things that are being talked about. Now, now, can I discuss? Can I just uh, err a, a, a viewpoint? No. Nope. Well, you see, this is you're stifling debate, Tommy. Oh, absolutely. And I call upon nope. uh, Archbishop of Westminster Cormac Murphy O'Connor to resign in the light of the disgraceful uh, uh, lack of, of uh, he, he should have gone to the police whenever are you, are you, are you, are you, is this anything to do with me this has to do with all of us well it doesn't have to do with me well it certainly has to do with me because no it doesn't you live miles away you've well, never met him and you don't know what he's like I certainly do know what he's like you've never met him when did you meet him well, I haven't met, I don't need to meet him. Yes, you he, do. He's a man who thinks he doesn't need to go to the police. He's got nothing to do with you. You're, with a, no, you're a nosy, you're a nosy busybody. What are you say after me? I, uh, it, you it only... are a nosy busy, busybody and it makes the world a worse place. And we no. don't like busybodies. Now, get a life and get interested in yourself and the people around you and stop forming shallow, superficial instant opinions about things about which you know nothing. If you don't know him, you're not entitled to an opinion about him. Oh, I certainly am, and I... No, I... you're certainly not. Not when I'm in town, and I'm in town. Call your local phone-in show, Wilfred, and they might be vaguely, well, that desperate for a call, they'll let you prattle on. What is it about the generation that Wilfred belongs to that makes them think that their views are so important about things they know nothing about? This man he's talking about is a human being. And can you imagine what it must be like to be a human being, whether you're in a prominent position or not? And people get to be prominent sometimes because they simply try to do their best. And then all of a sudden they're in a position of prominence. That's how teachers get to be heads. That's how coppers get to be superintendents. That's how, um, that's how school prefects get to be MPs. You know, they just carry on. They're not trying to be rotten or evil or, 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 or influence people's lives. They just follow a career path. What else can you do? Strange word, careers. Then you end up and you're vaguely sort of important. And as soon as that happens, then somebody starts to form totally inaccurate opinions about you, like Wilf, boy. Oh, Wilf, baby. I bet he's got a stack. Wilf! Yes, am I still on? No, I keep switching you off because you're ever so dull. No, listen. No, uh, you listen. I'm asking you a question. Wait, what? If, Is there anything you haven't got an opinion on? Uh, there are some things what? that aren't important and I have no opinion on them if they're Like trivial. what? Like what? Well, like, they're so trivial I can't think of them because they're no, unimportant. Well, give me something then that you've got... An, what's, the, what's the most ridiculous opinion 
that you've got about something that is so remote it's got so little to do with you that it's almost unbelievable I, I can't think of any well let's try something shall we I bet you've got some views about the Middle East peace process well, I couldn't care less about it fantastic let's talk about that then hey no tell me <laughs> <laughs> now you stop that you, no you stop it you're mind trying your, to get me wound up mind I, your own business I'm giving you advice I'm the doctor I'm in I'm a doctor as you know a philosopher Doctor I, I, Philosophy. I, I, I wanted you to know, Tommy. The reason I, that you're a lonely old beggar is because you have too many opinions about things that nobody's interested in. I, I'm not lonely. All my friends... Well, what do you keep phoning me for, then? But, well, you're one of my friends. You see... I'm uh, one of your enemies, Wilfred. If no, you haven't noticed that, you haven't got a clue. No, your no. Your antennae are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've been psychoanalyzing you, Tommy. I, I meant to tell you. I, I've been... Uh, I'm no, doing, you haven't been doing it as long as me. I, I'm, I'm doing a thesis on you. And I, 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 I'm psychoanalyzing... See, I all my conversations... I bet it's not as good as my thesis on me. Uh, sorry? I said, I bet it's not as good as my thesis on me. Oh! Have you psychoanalyzed yourself? Oh, yes. Oh, goodness me, I've done a lot of work on myself. Yes, it's an ongoing project though, isn't it? It's quite a sort of a zoo this evening, isn't it? There's all mm. sorts of animals here. It's not like you, you, you go into the reptile house and all you see is reptiles for about ten minutes. I, you know, do you, have you been to the zoo lately? You know, I, I haven't been to the zoo in many, no, many misery for ages. I want to go. Do you? Yes. Snakes are always disappointing at the zoo because they're always mm. coiled up over the far side. I'm a safari park person. Are you? Anyway, yeah, snakes are... They're always just asleep, aren't they? They yes. don't do anything. Yes, Generally speaking, all the animals in the zoo are disappointing, aren't they? Yeah. Except the ants. Yeah. The ant house. And the monkeys. The, you know, the monkeys are usually doing something fairly active. But not much, really. Not what you want them to do. When Guy the Gorilla was at London Zoo, that was always fairly disappointing. Guy the Gorilla? Because they just sit there, don't they? You just and they look at you going, just sit there, and he would off. look at you with such disdain. Yeah. Which you probably deserve. <coughs> I went with some kids once to a zoo, and yeah. this kid I was with threw an orange at a gorilla, mm -hmm. and it sort of just bounced off his chest. We were only about eight or nine, yeah. and this gorilla picked up the orange yeah. and threw it, <laughs> and it whacked him on the back of the head, <laughs> and it, it smashed on his head. Fantastic. Yeah. I wonder if you can teach animals to play ball sports. You teach gorillas well, and chimpanzees to play cricket. It is dogs that can play football. Though. You see it all the time. Well, you see that. But I, mean, I remember yeah. that at Earl's Court. They used to have a dog yeah. thing with balloons, but it wasn't for real. Monkeys can. They're you know intelligent uh, orangutans. They taught Washu the chimpanzee something like ninety-six words, and he could put sentences together. But wouldn't he have been a fantastic cricketer? And there's a gorilla that can do that. I'm sure there is. That, there's about a thousand words. Yeah, I'm sure there is. They've never taught them snooker. No, no, uh, no, that's true. That's very, very true. Mind you, there was Bill Werbenick. <laughs> I think he was from, Ru he was one of those Rwandese uh, <laughs> mountain gorillas. <laughs> I can see him now with Sigourney <laughs> Weaver up there. <laughs> A big silverback. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Up there with Sigourney Weaver in the <laughs> <laughs> rainforest. Yeah. 0870 40 60. 5 to 1, it's Monday morning, and, uh,. The world is taking stock. The UK economy has never been stronger. Inflation clearly is conquered. And I heard today that imports, exports, exports have never been at a higher volume in spite of the high pound. This is due yeah. in no uncertain terms to the strength of the British service industries abroad. Yeah. And uh, set against the backdrop of this uh, important news, I was just thinking, haven't, haven't everybody got a load of stuff? Everybody's got so much stuff. Yeah. You go around somebody's house, yeah. and you start looking at it, you notice it. You walk into somebody's house for the first time, and after you said, hello, hello, I'm, t I'm with Jane, that's no, fine. Then you find yourself one, and you look, and everybody's got so much stuff. And it is such a waste. It's all rubbish. What do you mean? Like technological things? No, just stuff in the house. Things. Pictures hanging on the wall that mean nothing. No. Ornaments sat on windowsills that mean nothing. 
curtains where you don't need curtains because who draws the curtains on the landing stairs I mean they're there they're just they're decoration what do you mean landing stuff <coughs> by a window yeah you don't draw your curtains the, the curtains don't need no. to be there people we spend so much of our you know those bag ladies that you see wandering around inner cities still yeah with their great big carrier bags <coughs> jammed full of pristine but empty cigarette cartons you know and we pity them mm we pity them and they go up to, to, to litter bins and they find a tin can that's in pristine condition and they lovingly rescue it from the litter bin and they put it in their way is that what they do? Yeah, yeah, yeah what, just get rubbish? collect rubbish if it's in pristine condition <coughs> bag ladies collect rubbish and what do they do with it? they take it back to their van and or their what? park bench what for? they just own it is that what they would carry around with them? Yeah. I thought they carried around their like. No, they have a they stuff. have an acquisitive they have an obsessive acquisitiveness. I've As seen those we all look in the bins. Yeah, they're looking for things. Yeah. They might be looking for dog ends. Yeah. Like Roger Miller in that song. Roger Miller didn't he play trailer football? for very talented bloke. He was a footballer for uh, Camer Cameroon, was he? Rooms to let fifty cent summer. Oh yeah, man, man of means, means by no means, means. king of the road. Yeah. And there's that bit in it about him making cigarettes out of cigarettes that he finds on the floor because they know. do that. Oh yeah, I know. Hobos that, yeah. do that. They oh, find yeah. a cigarette end. It was better when they're untipped cigarettes. You used to get untipped cigarettes. Well, you could yeah. buy them. Yeah. Can't really now. Capstans and stuff. And they find two or three dog ends. And then they get their Rizzlers and they they put the dog ends in and oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but these people are suffering from uh, obsessive acquisitiveness because they want things if they look bright and shiny. But we're, my point is, we're all the same. I mean, we might have an extremely strong economy, and all we're doing with it is buying rubbish. You know, we're not spending our money wisely, buying useful things, doing useful things with it. People are buying more and more trash the trash that they advertise in Sunday colour supplements and the trash that there is on sale and the catalogues that you get through your letterbox and everything it's it, awful hopeless okay. look around the room that you're in at the moment not necessarily the studio Ash I'm oh, thinking right. more about people at home okay. look at the trash you've got in your room the trash that you've got stashed just in case it will come in handy I'll imagine I'm in my room I, oh, yeah. how much what, what's, the, what's the biggest piece of trash you've got in your house well, I've just been brought... Uh, my friend keeps going to different places and he brings me different weapons from around the world. Yeah. And he's just come back from New Zealand. Uh, yeah. And he brought me back uh, one of the spears that the Maoris have. And it's not actually to be used like a spear. You point no. the point at them and then you yeah. bring the end round and whack them on the head with it. Yeah. And uh, so You don't need that, do you? Well, I don't know. I've got it on the wall, right? It's, well, it's going to be on the wall above the couch as ornamental, but... It's the couch I'm always on, and I could just grab it at any point and run off the couch into my mode. Oh, it's 740-50-60. On 10.89 and 10.53 a.m., Tommy Boyd on Talk Sport. Tommy why am I such a Christian? The Tommy Boyd radio experiment. It does exactly what it says in the paper. <laughs> Mmm, I smell bacon. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, when you grow up, when you grow up. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, it sucks pretty bad right now. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, when you grow up, when you grow up. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, it sucks pretty bad right now. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, when you grow up, when you grow up. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, and then you're gonna die. Hey! Hey! Tommy, Tommy, Boyd. me line five you're live on the human zoo on talk sport good evening to you good evening tommy ah professor hawking this is professor stephen hawking it is 
A cause of much controversy in the world of cosmology is whether the Big Bang will be followed by a corresponding Big Crunch, in which all of space and time will contract into a singularity. I theorize that it will. Some say this is a dreadful prospect, as it means that everything is ultimately futile, that all human endeavor, knowledge, art, and even love itself, is all for nothing. But I say every cloud has a silver lining. At least there is a mathematical certainty that there will finally be an end to Cliff Richard's recording career, which currently is in danger of outlasting eternity. I don't know about you, but oblivion is a small price to pay for that. And now, I'd like to finish with a son. A son my father used to sing to me when I was just a little boy. <laughs> Professor Stephen Hawking making a sec second appearance on the show this evening. The kid's good. He knows just about where the edge is, and uh, uh, he's got a future. Thank you for that. Take a few more calls live at random, unscreened. We'll see who's on line two. Good morning, line two. You're on Talk Sport. Hi, I'm just watching one of the shopping channels on cable, and they're trying to flog me a uh, mobile phone. And it's much more interesting than the rubbish your channel. Yes, yes, you again. Line, th try too hard. Line three, you're live on Talk Sport. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello to you. My name's Brian. Hi, Brian. Uh, all the conversations going on, and. Uh, I don't really follow your program at all, but the conclusion I've drawn, which is based upon the experience I've just had, is that you do really have a bad showing, don't you? Everybody that phones you, in the mind, doesn't like you. Now, you're aware of that. Yeah, obviously. And all you're doing is really aggravating people. Yeah. So I'm going to suggest that you resign from your job and put ash on. He seems to be a bit more intelligent than you. No, I don't think he'd say that. No. Well, I, no, no, I'm not worried about what he says. I'm just suggesting that you resign. No, I'm not going to do that, no. Why not? Well, don't you, you think you should do everybody a favour? All the callers following on from my call and all the previous callers will be delighted to see you resign. Yes, I'm sure they would, but I won't. That's right. Well, now, you know, do us a favour. Yeah. All right, and that's the end of my conversation. I don't really want to talk to you much more. Well, it's just that I think you just wind you? everybody up. That's right. And I think you just deserve and you, and you, a short especially. career. A and short I, and career. I, I, and, and you won't to put you. me down, sunshine. I'm talking you down. No, okay? You're gone. Good night you're to gone. you, my go, friend. Good go, night. Go. Go on. Go on. He's gone. Very predictable. Right? He's lost. Fantastic. Let's try line four. Line four, you're live on Talk Sport. No, he's hopped off. Line five. You're live on Talksport. Good morning. Hello, mate. Um, uh, can you pass the message on to Tommy Voice for me, please? No, you're you're talking to him now. This you're you're live on the air. Okay, Tommy. I didn't realise it gets. I thought it was us that answered the phone. Um, my name's Mr. Hickenbotham. Yeah, I was listening to you earlier on. Yeah, referenced a couple you phoned up about their seven-year-old son who had the um, incident with the man with the cigarette. Well, allegedly. 
Okay, allegedly. Now, I'm glad you said that on there because tomorrow morning I'm going to be on the telephone to the Broadcasting Standards Authority. Um, I, I taped your program because my wife's a nurse because she likes to listen to you during the daytime when she gets up. So I've also I've got it on tape. And the way you the way you spoke and treated these people over the telephone was disgusting. I haven't really got to have an argument with you, Tommy, but the way you spoke to them people was out of order. Okay, you, you might not necessarily have believed them, but the guy actually come on to you about what police response time, and initially when he said that, you just totally ignored him. He goes, I'm, he goes, I'm ringing up to you, uh, reference police response time, and initially you just you didn't, you didn't say words, and he had to say to you, hello, hello, as if he was like... Excuse just me, go- just do what you want to do, who cares? Go on, off you go, you want to be like that, just go and do it. Okay, what are you ringing me and telling me for? Just, just clear, what, clear, what, clear, 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 off, you to me, clear off and break. do it, you pipsqueak. Don't call me a pipsqueak, I'm not going to do you, pal. Just, just clear off and do it, I, who gives a, a shoot, you know? You would do if I, you would do if I don't give a you, toss. Mate. Go on, you well, waste, we'll see, we'll see. You, you waste, you waste, you waste, you waste, you waste, you waste, you waste tomorrow like you waste the rest of your life. I don't need to waste, I don't waste my life, mate. You're having a useless life, pal, and you're going to continue to have a useless life. How do you work out I've got a useless life? Tell me how you... What's my, okay, then what's my name and what do I do? It stinks. Your life stinks. Okay, explain to me how it stinks. It's obvious that your life stinks. Yeah, well, at least give me a couple of, you know, ways in which it, way it does. <laughs> from what you like. Well, now, if you, as you a hum- like from if, what you like as a human being. But you don't even know me. Well, uh, we know enough about you to know that your life stinks okay, and you're then angry. Okay, what, what, what do you know enough you're about a, me? You're angry, you're upset, you're cross. I am cross the way, yes, you are right. I you're, am not very, the way you're, not, you're not very bright. You're not prepared to give people the benefit of the doubt. You don't know what your you don't know your thing from your elbow, but you've got attitude. You're unhappy, and whatever it is you're unhappy about, you don't know what it is. Okay. You're confused. Just to let you know that I'll be on the telephone to the Broadcasting Standards Authority tomorrow I morning. Don't give a monkey's. Well, good. Good. I'm glad you said that. I don't give a monkey's. You, it couldn't, I couldn't. I couldn't give a toss. As long as you've got your story straight. I don't have to have a story. But as regards my life and my, you know... You're, my a, life, you're my a loser. Life's you're a loser. What do I, I do mean, for a living? Okay, a Tommy, what, if I'm a loser, what do I do for a living, Tommy? You, you're a loser as a human being. What a person does for a living is not their mark. Okay, but you've called me a loser. You are a loser. People who live on the streets are losers. You are a loser, my friend. People who live on I the probably, streets have got a, much more than you. I people who live on people who live on the streets have got their freedom. You haven't. Of course I have. You're a lost I, soul. And I think I earn three times as much and money you are, as you would. You are a captive in thrall. And I earn three times as much money as you do, And you haven't Tommy. got it. And nobody and is going to respect you. And I earn three times as much money as you do, Tommy. Or like you. And I earn as much more than you do, Tommy. That doesn't matter. If, if it were true, which it isn't. Oh, it is true. It wouldn't matter. You don't even know what I do for so That's why I said to you, what do I do for a living at the beginning? I don't care what you do for a well, living, then, don't, don't make assumptions then about me, Tommy. You're a loser because of who you are, not who what I? you do. Okay, then, who am I? Who a, am I? Tell a, me who I am. A poor piece of work. No, see, you don't even know who I am. Yeah. From what the we way learn. You speak, the, way you, the way you speak to a general public, you are, you're disgusting. I don't even know how you got a job on radio, Tommy. Because people like you ring me up. Well, of course we ring, we, we, we ring you up. I Inici- need people initially, like you. Initially, initially, I need, I need, I need, no, I am grateful, I want callers like you to ring me up. That's right. And but I get initially, you. But initially, we ring you up and to you have a fall, conversation and with you. you f- and you fall for it every time. Also, the way you spoke to that bloke last night. You bet. Wait. You bet. You bet. Yeah. You, you bet. Because you're out there, people like you, and you normally get away with it, but not when I'm here. What do I get away with, Tommy? Not giving the kids the ball back. <laughs> That's what play. you're like. You're one of them. But you know what I'm saying, Tommy? I don't you're one ball. of them. You're like those people who bump into my son so that they can say, watch where you're going, No, totally the opposite, mate. That's you. Can no I just tolerance. Let me just zero, zero, me. zero I'm, tolerance. I'm ex-military, yeah? So well, I, I bet I you pro- are ex-military, too. And what's more, I bet you run your family like that. No, not at all. Yeah. I've got respect for people. That's why I'm annoyed with you, Tommy. Because I'm ex-military, I've got respect for people. No, you haven't. That's the trouble. Uh, yeah, no, no I you haven't got respect for people at all. What you've got respect for is an unseen God, authority. Well, let me tell you, sunshine, authority will only disappoint you ever. 
if you're yeah, going to if you're going to if you're going to if you're going to climb out of the hole that you've dug for yourself there with all those fish heads all right <laughs> What you've got to do is construct your own God. Construct your own authority and apply it to yourself. Okay, well, you say something, but I've got respect for people. And I hope you can learn something yourself. No, you've got, re you've got respect for people who can't stand up for themselves. No, because I never treat, ill treat people. I never mistreat people. So how, how do I, how, how, why would they have to stand up for themselves? Shall I tell you the problem that I have with those people that you think you're protecting? Not just tonight, I want about last night also. Shall I tell you the problem that, that I have with those people that you like to think you're protecting? I'm all ears, Tommy. When you were in the army, you, you liked to kid yourself that you were protecting people who couldn't look after themselves from the, from the Russian menace or something. Well, we never saw Don't it like that. Don't be so silly. We thought... What we, are you we, talking we, about? Well, that's oh, what, well, all, well, all, all you guys, all you guys, me. all you guys are like that. All you guys are like that in the army. You, th you think you're going out there protecting us from the Russian... No, Tommy. Let well, me tell you, we... Were protecting. We, 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 protect we, were, we were protecting. I didn't join the armed forces to protect Tommy Let Boyd. me tell you something that you don't know. We were protecting you from the fact that you were useless at everything else. The only job you could have ever got was marching up and down a piece of tarmac, right? That's the first point. Now the second point is this, all right? Tell me, tell Kevin. There are a group no, of people. The there are a group of people. No, there are a group of people. There are a group of people who like to phone this show and others and upset people like you with harrowing stories and you fall for it ok whatever okay. you want to say about that alright just say something about All right. and you fell thought. for it again tonight and you'll probably fall for it again that's because you've got no perception and the reason you haven't got any perception is because they rob you of it in the army can I just say something about my call line 3 you're live on the human zoo hello Oh, God, then give us old peace, mate, resign. Now it's you. Hello. <laughs> it's the You're curtains, finished. man. The man looks at the curtains. You're finished. There's this little Scottish plonker who really is obsessed <laughs> with this radio <laughs> station. He rings everybody up. He rang Gary Jacobs up and he asked him about his mum's curtains. And poor what old Gary didn't realise, to begin with, that he was talking to a complete loony, which is you. You I are a sad so. man. You are so. the saddest man Thank in you Britain. Me. You are I absolutely you so sad because you are. You are it. incredibly sad. At least I'm consistent. I mean, if I'd nominated anybody well, else as being the saddest then. man you're in Britain, then, then, you, then I wouldn't have a case to, 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 to defend, would I? But you are, you, only you, are the saddest man in Britain. You don't even know who the last horse was to win the Triple Crown. You're you, are, you, you, you are the saddest. You try to pick yourself up you, as a jockey and I know this and I know that. You are the saddest man in Britain. I you don't know who I what the last horse was to win the Triple Crown. I and you come on and you say, I've rode round Cheltenham. Yeah, I've rode round Cheltenham. I've had Madonna and me and Arnold Schwarzenegger and best friends. I've been swimming in Great Wales. I've done it all. I've had a life. And you it's going to get drunk. better, and yeah. you are a nobody, and you are a sad Kleenex man, you are. Right. I bet you get through a box of Kleenex a week. But can I ask you a question then? No. No? I just beg you, I beg you, all right, to become something. Right, well, I you know... I beg you, you okay. to become a human being. I beg you to right. become an interesting person. Right. I beg you to get out of your smelly little flat. Okay. Occasionally. But that's a bit nasty, but anyway... I beg you, I, I, beg, I, don't, you, I, don't I beg you to, I don't to go and be do nasty something to useful. I beg you to go and do something useful. Well, well, I've already done that. Every single human being has a duty to themselves... Yeah, but I've done that. ...to you do are... something for other people. I've done and that. I have a strong suspicion that you're a take, 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 Merchant. No, I've done useful things for other people. Right okay, now. right. Um, I voted this year for the um, Radio um, Personality Award. Now you see, and the, I the worst of this is, 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 fella, and, and this, you know what this is, this is, this is I got the a letter truth. Back. This is I the got truth. What back. you're saying and now is actually the me, truth. Your actual belief me, is, if you knew anything and writing at all, letters, if you knew and anything at all, you would have known that this was a is what you consider to be some kind of a contribution to society. You frightened me. That's what they said. You've got a vote. You're probably, you'd be allowed to have children. I know you haven't got any. No. I don't think you've ever met a woman. Mm -hmm. But my point is, you could if you wanted to, and that genuinely frightens me. Right. Why yeah. don't we? Why don't we shoot genuinely the mate? Genuinely frightens me. Why don't we shoot the mate? Really, truly frightens me. Let's I shoot wouldn't the even mate. let you have a dog. 
<laughs> because I don't think you'd know how to look after that. I don't think you've got it. I don't know what your problem I don't think is. You've got, I don't but I think, think you've got lots of problems. Because every time you bring up, dog. all you do, all you're, you're capable, capable of, of doing, a dog. Is loving oh, a dog. All you are, all you are, is. Do you have any idea how affirming you have been brought here to you? Do you have any how wonderful people kind of feel dog? after they've listened to you on what, the radio? What, what kind of a dog have you Because got? it doesn't matter how poor what somebody kind of is, it doesn't matter got? how low somebody feels, it doesn't matter what their self-esteem is, after they've listened to you, mm. they realise that it could be worse. Well, it could be because you could end up speaking to the dolphins and Tommy, you'll know more about that than the callers. You keep it up, mate. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, that's the only bad bit about the human zoo, is that people you don't have on because they really are, I mean, you know, terrible. Could you love a dog? Truly terrible. Could you? Could I love a dog? Could you? Well, I wouldn't have a dog anymore. Could you love a tog, Tom? A tog? No, a dog. A dog. No, I wouldn't have a dog anymore. I used to like Tommy, dogs. you've avoided the question. Oh, right. Could you love a dog? In what way? What are you, what are you driving at? Well, yeah, of course I could love a dog. Well, I've got a rotten old flea-bitten cat. Yeah. I don't really love her, she, but, you know, I look you after her. You do, though, I think. No, I don't. You I do? I look after her. You don't I'm the one her. who has to empty her litter tray you every must, day. If she wasn't there, you'd I be come sad. down sometimes at 11 o'clock in the morning in my dressing gown and to make myself a nice cup of tea yeah. And what do you think there is in the kitchen, by the kitchen door? Poo. A pile of cat poo. Oh, okay. Surrounded by grit. And she always manages to kick loads of grit all over the kitchen when and she's trying to cover for? it up. Um, sorry? You haven't got a cat She won't go out. Oh, right. Because there's a cat next door. Litter tray. She won't go out. She won't go out of the house. But you can have a litter tray in the house. The litter tray is in the house. It's in the kitchen. Well, it's not very hygienic anyway. Animals. I don't want Animals it in, in the, the kitchen. Animals in the house is not a right where, where is it a hygienic place to put in the house? Have an animal do its business and then Please and everything, kick it? grit, which has been in contact with waste matter all over the room. Where's a good place to put that? The garage. <laughs> garage, but she won't go out. No. Her belly's sagging. She's about 27 in cat year, in real years. Oh, no. You know, since you asked the question. 08700 40 50 60 is the number. You're tuned to the Human Zoo, taking calls live, unchecked. And at random. So we see who's on line four. Line four, you're live on Talks. Okay, line five. Hi, line five. Hi, I, I, is, is that Tommy? Speaking. Hi, it's Mike here. Hey, Mike. Um, I just wonder, with your knowledge and everything, and mm. all the things that you've done, whether mm. you consider going on the lecture tour. Yes, I have. I've thought about it, but uh, but I can't be bothered really. Uh, People well, don't yeah. listen. Well, I can understand that, because your show is crap. <laughs> oh, dear. Fantastic. If only, you know, I, I feel for people like that, because they really hope it hurts, and it must... I don't know what it must do to them to know that it doesn't. It doesn't because it wasn't good enough, and it doesn't because they don't matter. That's... That... That's what really makes them so arch. The knowledge that their rudeness doesn't, you know, is, is, is not even an insect nip. That must be very annoying. My advice is, don't try. Because that way you won't risk the hurt of knowing that you don't matter. Simple as that. And line six. Good evening, line six. You're on the human zoo. Place in the place, London. Dun, 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 dun. Place in the place, London. Dun, 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 dun. Place in the place, London. 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 Place in the place, 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 London. Ah, like James Providence. Is that true? I've never heard of him. No. Is that what they listen to these days? I expect so. Line six, you're on the human zoo. Good evening. Thank you. 
looking for another room, isn't it? Mm. The emails are rubbish tonight as well, I'll tell you. Must be the moon or something. I don't know. Oh, All right, 704-2020-20 is the number. Uh, line three. Welcome to the Human Zoo, line three. Hello? Hello. I want to take you on a journey. You're lying on the beach, on this out. You're nice and warm. You see a man go by. You realize he's wearing crutches and knickers. You walk by, you sit up, you say, Oi, lick him. He steps himself up, he gets up. He goes to three men, one of them wearing... Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for that. Line three, good evening, welcome. And line five, you're on the human zoo. Line one, good evening. Hello. <laughs> this is crap tonight, Ash. I don't know what's wrong. No, it's just crap. Do you reckon? Do you reckon it's no, just, I, I don't reckon. I know. It, this is crap. This is crap radio. This well, is the crappiest I, radio I've ever been involved in. This is unbelievable yeah. rubbish. I don't know what's going on with these well, phones. Well, yes, you do know what's going on with these phones. What? You know perfectly well. What's, don't say you don't know what's going on with the phones. Be honest. You know exactly what's going on with the phones. There's well, people being diverted away ah, to hear a bunch of messages, well, and then yeah. people who are trying to make decent contributions to a phone-in program yeah. simply can't. And I'm taking phone calls yeah. on phones that are lit up all across the radio station with people saying that they've been spending 20 minutes trying to get through to there, and they can't. That's what's going on, isn't it? Well, yeah, but tonight particularly is, seems worse. Well, since, that's what, since, but since that's that what's system. going on, isn't it? Well, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's definitely... Well, that's what's major, going on, isn't it? I well, don't piss partner. about. That's what's going on, isn't it? Well, I think, I, I mean, no, because there have been technical problems all day, so well, I, don't know, I don't know whether it is. Oh, come on, get real. Be straight, Ash. Go on. You're the guy who always plays the hippie and always pretends he's straight. Be straight. That's what's going on, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, I would have thought so, but I've, I'll have to check it. Nah, look, you, you well, stop pussy-fussing around. You know exactly that's what's going I on, don't I, you? Well, I've got my suspicions. Oh, uh, what a wuss. I never thought of you as a wuss, but you're a wuss, aren't you? That's what's going on, isn't it? Well, I, you know, don't no, wuss I, off. Don't wuss off. No, on I'm it. not wussing off. Yes, I'm, you I'm are. Looking at the evidence. Don't be pathetic. Do you really think, though, that you know all... perfectly well that's exactly what's going on? And I never thought that you would actually be a pansy. No, I'm not. Don't be a pansy about it. You know exactly that. But that's what's going on. So say so. I haven't got time for another call. Um. Yeah, go on, let's just see who's on, say, line two. Line two, you're live on TalkSport. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Hiya. Who's Hi. that? That's Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. Sorry, Tommy, you sound different on the phone than you on the radio. It's Lucy mm. over in East London here. Hi, we're almost out of time, but I just thought I'd see who was, who was on line two, so it's you. I'm just ringing up to say, keep on doing what you're doing, and mm. that bloke that you just had on before, wasn't he a plum? <laughs> if he's got nothing better to do than make a complaint about you tomorrow, then he must have a very, very sad, boring life. True enough. Anyway, Thank you keep, for your call. Keep what you're doing, yeah? All right, babe. Bye. Well, I was going to anyway, but uh, since you asked. Okay. Ash, thank you very much indeed. That's uh, no problem. For your Look company to it and support. Week. And uh, cheers. And uh, we'll do it again next week. Stand by for Chris. Chris. In the shrine. In the shrine. Of Tommy Boy. The Tommy Boy Radio Experiment. It does exactly what it says in the paper. Mmm, marshmallow bacon. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, when you grow up, when you grow up. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, it sucks pretty bad right now. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, when you grow up, when you grow up. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, it sucks pretty bad right now. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, when you grow up, when you grow up. Life's gonna suck when you grow up, and then you're gonna die. Tommy, 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 Boyd.